Amy June, and um, welcome everyone. Uh, as Amy June said, yes, this talk is about advanced Google Analytics and other integrations with Google Tag Manager. Uh, my name is JD Leonard. Uh, I'm a freelance Drupal architect, a backend developer, and consultant. Um, and uh, <laughs> I have a little note at the bottom here. I hope you like uh, your three letter acronyms because uh, Google Analytics and Google Tag Manager are just full of them. Um, so, uh, welcome. And uh, let's get started. So uh, what are we talking about today? Um, well, the key concepts um, that we're going to talk about are tags, uh, Google Tag Manager, Google Analytics, Drupal, of course, and the data layer. Um, OK, so first, what is a tag? Uh, so a tag is a piece of code served by a website to collect data about visitor activity or provide other functionality. Um, usually it's JavaScript um, and or it might be might involve tracking pixels uh, and some examples include uh, web analytics uh, like Google Analytics, Kissmetrics, Mixpanel, um, advertising or, or remarketing um, like Google Ads or Facebook's Pixel, uh, A-B testing like Google Optimize or Optimizely, uh, GDPR uh, cookie compliance banners could be implemented uh, using tags um, or maybe chatbots or customer support overlays. Uh, is another another thing you might use a tag for. Um, so Google Tag Manager, uh, which we'll abbreviate GTM, uh, is a service, um, and it provides organization and versioning of tags. Uh, it allows marketers self-service options to implement and change uh, the serving of tags on a website. And once it's implemented for a website, then marketers don't need developer support uh, for the most part, uh, unless a tag requires some information um, that isn't already available uh, to it. Um, so you can think of Google Tag Manager as one tag to rule them all. Uh, it's its own tag, and our website needs to serve that tag to visitors so that Google Tag Manager can then serve all the rest of the tags. Uh, it only collects the data uh, that you actually care about because you have to configure it to actually do something uh, with the data. Um, and it facilitates performance, um, so it has an asynchronous uh, implementation, um, so you don't have to worry about Google Tag Manager uh, or generally the tags that uh, it then serves, uh, third-party tags, uh, from causing performance issues for your site, which is great. Um, and it also allows the data that is collected to be routed through Google Tag Manager in the cloud uh, to multiple services. Um, so that can help uh, you know, in case you have multiple services that need to collect the same information, maybe you use multiple analytics services, for example, uh, they don't necessarily each need to grab the data themselves. It may be possible to, to wrap that through uh, GTM. Um, the main disadvantage of Google Tag Manager um, compared to directly integrating your website with Google Analytics is it takes more work to implement. Um, but it's really a, an upfront investment. And once you've done that, uh, you reap the benefits. Okay, so Google Analytics, you probably know what that is. Uh, very popular free analytics service, uh, originally for measuring activity on websites. Uh, back in 2014, Universal Analytics, or UA, uh, was introduced. Um, and that also, or separately, can support mobile apps as a source of, of data. Um, there are, uh, Universal Analytics has three types of properties. In Google Analytics, there are web properties, apps properties, and apps and web properties. And Universal Analytics was the latest incarnation of Google Analytics until uh, Google Analytics 4. Uh, GA4 was announced and began rollout just two days ago. <laughs> um, so this is hot off the presses. Uh, and it's, uh, as best as I can understand, a rebranding and upgrade of Universal Analytics apps and web property. Um, that said, it doesn't require that there is a mobile app. You can use it with uh, just a website, no problem. Uh, it does require creating a new GA4 property. If you just had a website before, uh, there is a, a way to, I think, migrate or upgrade existing properties. Um, and uh, it's the default for new properties, uh, as long as your account, I think, has had this rolled out to it yet. Uh, as of an hour ago, my account still didn't have this rolled out to it, so I can't create Google Analytics 4 properties yet. Um, I, I don't have those new features in my account. Um, so uh, as you'll see at the bottom bottom bullet point here, this is really out of scope for today because I don't know much about it. Um, and just one note, I, I did read that uh, the measurement protocol 
is not supported by Google Analytics 4. Um, and you probably don't know about this because it's a pretty niche case, but the measurement protocol facilitates uh, you taking and sending measurements uh, from a server as opposed to from a user's browser or a, web or a mobile app um, and sending those directly into Google Analytics. Um, there are, I think there are some replacement technologies available for GA4, but I don't know anything about them. Okay, so back to Google Analytics. Um, so the uh, your existing and new universal analytics properties are still supported, so phew, don't have to worry about that. Um, and universal analytics requires that one of the following tags be served by your website, either the universal analytics analytics.js tag or the global site tag or G tag. Uh, G tag is newer. It supports Google Analytics as well as other Google product tags. Um, and just a note here, I wouldn't go out of your way to upgrade from the universal analytics tag um, if the only Google tag that you're, you're using or have a need for is Google Analytics. Um, that said, if you're starting fresh, absolutely use the new G tag. There's just, there's seemingly no benefit from going out of your way to upgrade. Okay, so Google Tag Manager, uh, which we'll talk more about, um, their universal analytics integration serves the UA tag, uh, the universal analytics tag. The new GA4 integration for Google Tag Manager serves the G tag. So clearly Google's moving in the direction of, of using GTAG, um, but you're, you're not gonna run into problems if you start using the UA tag now. Okay, another key concept, the data layer. Um, so there's a W3C specification out there uh, from years ago, 2013, I think, the Customer Experience Digital Data Layer, or CEDDLA, catchy. Um, and this is the basis for different companies' data layer implementations. Um, Put very simply, uh, it's a virtual layer of a website that contains data. That's what a data layer is. Um, and more specifically, uh, it's a JavaScript array uh, or object that temporarily stores information that can be easily accessed by scripts such as GTM. Um, so some examples of that information could include page content metadata, things like the page title, page description, author, uh, visitor information, uh, is it a logged in user? What's their ID? Uh, what roles do they have? Things like that. Uh, or events happening on the page. So somebody clicks on a button or makes a purchase. Um, Google's version of a data layer uh, is an array of objects and Google refers to those objects as, or rather to the, <laughs> what's within that object as variables. Um, so in the screenshot here, you can see uh, an example of two variables. One is page category and the value there is sign up, and one is visitor type with a value high value. Um, this is taken from Google's developer documentation. It's not specific to Drupal in any way, just to give you a general example of uh, the data layer and what it contains. Okay, so the data layer uh, basically acts as a queue into which information is pushed. Um, and so here's some examples uh, in JavaScript. You could do data layer dot push, and you're pushing the color red uh, into the data layer. Um, or you can push more than one thing at once. Um, so you might push a color, a conversion value, and an event in this example. Okay, so let's talk about Drupal. <laughs> That's why we're all here, right? Um, so there are a bunch of base modules that we could choose from uh, for integrating with Google Analytics. Um, there's the base, just plainly named Google Analytics module. Um, that's got about 79,000 uh, Drupal 8 or 9 sites reporting uh, its use, very popular. There's the Google Analytics module, previously called G Analytics, um, much less popular, only 5,000 D8 plus sites using that. Then there's Google Tag Manager, all one word, uh, 28,000 uh, sites reporting using that. And then there's Google Tag Manager. Uh, notice uh, different machine names. Be careful if you're choosing which one to install. Um, that one's obviously much, uh, much less popular. And that is a simpler implementation. Probably nothing wrong with it. Um, but uh, the Google tag machine name uh, module has been around longer, and that's what we're going to use today. Um, so the first two, Google Analytics and Google Analytics, those integrate Drupal with Google Analytics directly, uh, whereas the two Google Tag Manager ones integrate Google Analytics via Google Tag Manager. Um, so there's one other key module we're going to use here. It's called Data Layer. 
Uh, and that's got about 5,000 sites reporting use. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, yeah, so we're covering Drupal 8 and 9 today. Um, but the key modules we're using do work in Drupal 7. Uh, and all the same principles apply. So um, if you're on a Drupal 7 site, you could still take advantage of all this stuff. OK, so a few Drupal modules um, that we're not going to cover. So there's Commerce Google Tag Manager, and that uh, integrates Drupal Commerce with uh, Google Analytics enhanced e-commerce functionality. Uh, then there's the Domain Google Tag Manager module that provides domain access integration. So you could have a different Google Tag Manager container uh, per domain. And there's the context data layer module, um, and that provides conditions and reactions for the context module, which can be a very powerful way uh, of, of pushing some things onto the, uh, the data layer and thus into Google Analytics. Okay, so before we get to our goal today, <laughs> let's take a quick pause. Um, Amy June, any questions you want to ask at this time? They answered themselves in chat, so we're good for now. Okay, thank you. We'll move on. Um, so the answer is, our goal today, we want to integrate Drupal and Google Analytics using the Google Tag Manager. Okay, so the key steps to do that, uh, we're going to create a Google Analytics account and properties. Uh, we need to create a Google Tag Manager account and a container, GTM parlance. We need to disable the Google Analytics module. Uh, we need to, if we're, if we're using that already, because um, that will conflict. Uh, and then we want to install and configure the Google Tag Manager module. And then we need to configure Google Tag Manager, uh, the service up in the cloud, uh, to pass data uh, from our site to Google Analytics. OK, so we're at Bad Camp. <laughs> I represent Nice Camp, or Drupal Camp NYC. And, um, uh, we're going to use Drupal Camp NYC 2020's website as our case study for today um, because that's where I most recently implemented uh, Google Analytics via Google Tag Manager. Um, so you can take a peek at uh, 2020.drupalcamp.nyc if you want to uh, take a look at the code and kind of what's going on on the front end. Um, and this is a Drupal 8 site. There was no previous Google Analytics uh, integration worth using. Um, so we basically started fresh. Uh, with this implementation for Google Analytics. Uh, the site's developed locally using Lando, uh, and it's hosted on Pantheon. And Pantheon, as you may know, has uh, dev, test, and live environments. That'll uh, be relevant later. Uh, and uh, shameless plug, join us November 12 to 14. Uh, there are free tickets for the last North American Drupal camp until mid-2021. Um, so head on over to Drupal Camp NYC. OK. so. Uh, create a Google Analytics account. So I'm not going to walk through these steps visually, all these steps visually, because it would just take too long. <laughs> there are too many clicks, and it's pretty straightforward. Um, but I'm going to give you the highlights and, and what you need to do. Um, so in Google Analytics, uh, the top level container is called an account. Usually, you'll have one account for organization. Now, a large organization might have um, one account for business unit or for a logical group of websites and apps or maybe just for one individual website or app that's very important or they need to categorize separately for some reason. Um, and when you create that account, that first account, uh, it also creates that account's first property. And the property uh, is basically a website. However, uh, a best practice, and it's one that is uncommonly used, I would say, in the Drupal community, uh, is to have one property for your live environment and another property for your non-live environments. And this is very important uh, because you wanna make sure that your live analytics data is as accurate as possible, especially if you're making business decisions based on it. There's not much point in you know, implementing Google Analytics if you're not actually going to make business decisions based on it. Um, and there's nothing stopping you from having one property per environment. Um, but I think the, the most important step is to have one for live, and it, one or more for your other environments. Um, and that also facilitates testing. Um, when you deploy Google Tag Manager uh, you know, configuration, uh, you can deploy it to one environment, test it there, make sure it's working before you risk messing up your live environment. Um, so for Drupal Camp NYC's website, uh, we have three properties. We've got a live property, test, 
And then we've got a third property for uh, the Pantheon dev environment and for any local environments. So that would be my local environment, it would be the local environments of my other, other peer developers. Okay, so this is us creating a property. Um, you know, web property is the what's most commonly used. Uh, I mentioned the apps and web property earlier, as that, that's kind of what GA4 is evolving from. Um, there's nothing stopping you from creating an apps and web property, even if you don't have an app. Um, and it might actually be preferable because I think it might make the transition to GA4 easier. Not really sure. But you can create a web property, no problem. And, you know, it's not hard, right? You add in the name and a, a URL for that website, uh, for, specifically for that environment. So here you see I'm creating the, the live environment if I'm pointing to the live URL. Okay, now a little more configuration we're gonna do in Google Analytics. Um, so we're gonna set up some custom dimensions and what you need to set up here really depends on your needs. Um, but here's just some base you know, data that we might wanna collect. Um, that is going to come from Drupal. Uh, and to make it very clear and make it easy to search for these in the GA interface, I've prefixed all of the names of these custom dimensions with Drupal. Um, so you can see Drupal Entity Bundle, Drupal Entity ID, that would be a node ID if the bundle is, is a type node, um, and so on. So those are, um, those are going to be important for uh, you know, using in your reporting potentially. Uh, you might want to see how blog posts perform, uh, you know, relative to uh, some other content on your website, normal pages or something like that. See how many people start visiting on one and convert, uh, you know, into a paying customer, for example. Okay, one more piece of configuration we're going to do in Google Analytics, and this is actually for uh, the views, uh, so a view within Google Analytics, um, and we're setting up a filter used for the view, uh, and we're setting it, we're gonna call it include anonymous. Uh, so the idea here is that we're gonna have one view that has only our anonymous visitors. Uh, so in this way, we're gonna essentially exclude any traffic that's coming from logged in users. Um, so this will depend on your needs, right? If, if uh, you only have content editors logging into your website, you might not be using Google Analytics to, to track their uh, interactions, and you may want to not you know, bother seeing their interactions that they pollute your data. Um, so this is one approach, and you can see in the, uh, this is a filter uh, with a type include, and we're including based on the Drupal user UID, which is what we defined as a custom dimension. And on the right-hand side, you can see the drop-down uh, menu for that select, and you can see in green at the bottom, all of the custom dimensions that we added in the last uh, step. So we select Drupal user I, UID there. Uh, and then you would go ahead and create additional views. You could create one that uh, doesn't have this filter and um, that would have all your traffic. Uh, you could have one that has only your authenticated traffic. Um, maybe you wanna track authenticated uh, user behavior specifically. Um, again, depends on your business case. And so here you can see, um, you know, kind of in the Google Analytics interface, uh, here we're in the, uh, the camp dev local um, property, you can see at the very top left, and we've created a view named 01 anonymous visitors, and we've added a filter that we just set up called include anonymous. Okay, so that's basically all the Google Analytics setup that we're going to cover today. Um, obviously, there's a lot you can do in Google Analytics, but um, we're really talking here to talk about Drupal and our integration via Google Tag Manager. Um, okay, so now we need to create our Google Tag Manager account and container. Uh, and generally, your Google Tag Manager account probably should map uh, to the Google Analytics account. Um, and similar to Google Analytics, when you create an account in Google Tag Manager, it also creates uh, that account's first container. And a container is a set of macros, rules, and tags. And a container can support multiple environments. Um, that's different than in Google Analytics, where a property um, really should be just for a single environment. Uh, and generally, you'll have one container per website, although it's possible that you could have multiple containers in the website. Um, but it's, it's a less common use case. 
Okay, so here we are creating that uh, new account. So here, uh, in this case, we'll call the account Drupal NYC. That's our nonprofit and covers both uh, the camp and our monthly meetups and other activities in the New York region. Um, and so for our organization, as I mentioned, we have a single account uh, and we can have multiple containers within that. And, oh, sorry, I'll back up a second. So the container setup you can see is embedded here. And so I put in the live URL um, because that's the kind of the default URL we're gonna use, right? Um, and that's the, the Drupal Camp website. Okay, so Google Tag Manager has a concept called environments. And by default, you start out with a live environment and a latest environment. Uh, the live environment is where you publish all your changes in Google Tag Manager to. Um, and the latest uh, is just kind of a way of pointing to the latest changes you've made in Google Tag Manager without you having to deploy it somewhere uh, specifically. But we're missing some environments. So we're gonna go ahead and create a dev environment here. Um, and all I have to do is add the name of the environment in the top left corner, I call it dev. And you can put a destination URL. So I put our uh, you know, dev URL from Pantheon uh, down there. And that's all you have to do here. And also did that for test and other, you can see I added an arrow pointing to other there. Um, so I chose in Google Tag Manager um, to set up three environments, three custom environments beyond the live environment. Um, so we've got the dev environment, test environment, and then other basically consists of local uh, development environments, um, but you'll see why it might be named something like rather than local uh, in a little bit. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on other here. And um, don't worry, you don't have to sprint to read this, <laughs> um, but it'll pop up uh, this little window here. And this is where you need to pull out uh, the GTM off and the GTM preview values for each environment. Okay, so we grab those. Oh, I guess I should say why. <laughs> so um, the GTM preview value basically corresponds to, to each environment. And it's, it's just a ENV dash and then a number. Uh, and so each environment is gonna have a, a different number and then the uh, GTM auth corresponds to that. Um, and you don't really have to worry about the security of the GTM auth in this use case. Um, uh, all you have to know is you need both of them. Uh, and we'll, we'll show, we'll see later when we set Drupal up uh, where we put those in. Okay, so uh, we have to make sure we've disabled a Google Analytics module if we had one already. So we'll pretend we've just done that, great. And now it's time to install the Google Tag Manager module and the data layer module. Um, so we use Composer here and then Crush, or you can use the UI to enable it depending on your setup. And now uh, we're going to configure that. Okay, so this is the Google Tag Manager modules uh, configuration page in the administrative interface of Drupal. You start out with a default container, and we only need that one default container. Uh, and just like in Google Analytics, um, there's an ID for your Google Tag Manager container. And so we pull that out of the Google Tag Manager interface and we paste it in here. And then importantly, because we're having, uh, we have different environments and we're, we're setting this up per environment, we have to go to the advanced tab. So if we click on the advanced tab on the left here, uh, now we get a few more options. Um, and we have to check the box, includes an, include an environment. And, that, and then you get the option to, to paste in the environment ID, which in this case is env-7, um, uh, and the environment token. That's what we pulled out earlier. Okay, now we're flipping over to our settings.php, and uh, hopefully you can read this, but uh, basically what we're doing here is we're providing different configuration overrides depending on which Pantheon environment we are in. Um, so if we're in the dev environment, um, then we're using one environment, one Google Tag Manager environment, and we have the ID and the token there, separate for test, separate for live, and then we have the default, uh, which is other. Um, so on Pantheon, if you have multi-dev environments, other would, would cover that case. Um, and depending on how you use them, you might want to specifically call them out here and have separate Google Tag Manager environments set up for them. Um, but it's probably not necessary. It really just depends on, on your needs. 
Uh, and so you can see for the other at the very bottom, we've got env 7 and then that environment token trailing off of it. Um, and this is important because, um, you know, when we deploy this to our different environments, we want to make sure that we are pulling in the right Google Tag Manager environment. Um, we, we, this is critical to ensuring that we're not kind of messing up our, our live environment with the non-live environments. Okay, so the data layer module is the other one we just installed. And there's a ton of configuration here um, available, and I'm not going to walk through each one. Um, it's fairly self-explanatory. Um, but just to get a general sense, um, basically what this module does is it adds data to the data layer. We have a, yeah. question, we have a question from Benji um, asking if we could use config split too for this. Ah, config split. Yes, yeah, so I'm a big fan of config split. Um, and you probably could, could figure out a way to do it. Yeah, yes, yeah, so you could use config split. Um, I decided that this was an easier approach, um, but there's nothing wrong with using config split if, if you can make it work. Um, yeah, so back to the configuration here. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it might be tempting to check all the boxes, <laughs> um, but then the data layer module is doing a bunch of work. And if you're not going to take advantage of that data on the data layer, there's no point. Um, you're, just, you're just having to do more work and there could be some negative performance implications of that. Um, so, you know, depending on what you're going to use in Google Analytics or other uh, tags that Tag Manager is providing, uh, you're going to want to just check the boxes that you care about here. Um, so we'll, we'll go through a few more screens of settings. Uh, the path architecture is kind of interesting. Um, uh, so, you know, if it's node slash and then a node ID, uh, you've got path component zero, path component one. Um, uh, you might be able to do some interesting things with that in, in Google Analytics reporting. Uh, we're not using taxonomies on this site, uh, or at least we're not tracking them in Google Analytics, so we haven't, haven't checked those boxes. Uh, user details, so here's where you can uh, ensure that the roles of any uh, users are tracked appropriately. Uh, and then the data layer output keys section, um, so this has to map Basically, these names need to be mapped uh, from here to Google Tag Manager and then from Google Tag Manager to Google Analytics. Um, so we'll, we'll see these uh, in another few screens. Okay, so now we actually have to configure Google Tag Manager that's up in the cloud uh, to pass the data that, it's, that is on the data layer of our Drupal site to Google Analytics. Okay, so on the left-hand side, uh, you see the kind of part of the main interface for Google Tag Manager. And we click on the variables tab. Uh, and then at the top of the page, there's gonna be a configure button next to built-in variables. So we click on that and we get uh, this screen here. And so now you wanna check some of these boxes. Um, so these are the ones that, that I checked here. Uh, and of particular note, uh, the environment name is gonna be very relevant um, to our setup. Uh, and then some of these other ones are just general information that uh, you know, will be good to have in Google Analytics. Uh, and so now you see all the built-in variables are, uh, are here on that variables tab. So these are the ones I checked. Okay, user-defined variables. So <laughs> I don't have screens of adding each of these, but it's fairly self-explanatory interface. Um, and we'll dive into these a little more uh, in a bit, but um, you can see that uh, we've got a Drupal entity bundle, entity ID, title, type, uh, the revision ID, uh, Drupal user roles. We've got uh, the Drupal user ID, uh, the UID there, and we've got two different versions here. Um, and uh, we can get into that in a little bit. Uh, we've got the roles. We've got um, a lookup table that basically maps the uh, environment, the Google Tag Manager environment that is active to the correct Google Analytics property. Uh, there's the GA settings uh, variable. Um, that's very important and we'll go into that in a little bit. And then we've got some constants that we've set up that basically contain the Google Analytics property IDs for each of our Google Analytics properties. Okay. 
Um, so where are we here? Google Analytics, uh, uni okay, page, okay, so sorry, this is the trigger. Um, so uh, we were, just the trigger? <laughs> yes, this is the trigger. Um, so we, we set up a bunch of variables uh, and then another key part of uh, Google Tag Manager is a trigger that determines under what conditions a tag uh, is served on the website. And so uh, Google Tag Manager natively supports Google Analytics. As I mentioned before, um, there's a universal analytics integration, which is what we're using here. And there's the new GA4 integration, which I know very little about. Um, so here we are on universal analytics, and we're saying uh, that we are tracking page views and that we're gonna use this variable, the GA settings variable, as our Google Analytics settings uh, input. And then at the very bottom, you see triggering, and you can say there's see there's one firing trigger called all pages, uh, and you can guess that that triggers um, this Google Analytics integration on every page. Um, you might be familiar from the Google Analytics module uh, of you know having ways of not um, having Google Analytics fire. Uh, for example, for ad admin users, administrative users, or on certain pages. Um, and you can set up, um, you know, something like that with Google Tag Manager. Um, however, uh, it is more flexible uh, to have that set up in the Google Tag Manager interface. Uh, it's a lot easier to change there and tweak um, rather than having to have a developer uh, do something on the Drupal site. Okay, so um, now we see uh, we've added the Google Analytics Universal uh, universal analytics uh, tag here uh, with that firing trigger that we had before and we're good to go. So we've basically, we've done all the setup that we need to do, um, skipped over a few details for time, um, but hopefully you got the idea. And um, this is basically uh, the end of my prepared um, slides here, um, but I can share my screen and walk through the, the settings and configuration uh, in any of Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager, or Drupal now. Um, so I'd encourage anybody with a question uh, to uh, type it in the chat and, uh, and Amy June will, will ask that for you. And uh, while we're waiting for questions, I'm gonna switch my screen sharing over and uh, I've got a few things to walk, uh, walk through if there are no questions. Okay. Okay, so just diving uh, a little deeper here and uh, Amy June, feel free to interrupt me with any questions that come up. Um, so this is where you saw the screenshot of earlier where we were configuring our filter um, and that we have that include drop down here where we selected the Drupal user UID. Uh, and just to kind of hit home, um, that this is only an option because we added it as a custom dimension. Um, and yes, yeah, so you can't forget to do that if you want to, you know, take advantage of, of things like that here. Uh, and I'll just also point out here the different uh, views that we set up here. Um, and there's some great blog posts out there uh, that give some tips on, uh, you know, why you want to have a whole bunch of different views potentially. Um, I already talked about having the anonymous visitors view and authenticated users view, um, so you can you know, see their activity independently. Um, and then an all view if you want to see anonymous and authenticated activity together. Uh, and then you, uh, you might want a separate user ID view. Uh, Google Analytics has this user ID view concept. Uh, and then it's a best practice also to have a, a raw data view um, where you don't have any filters, you don't have any strange things going on. And that's kind of a backup of all your data um, where you can always go to, to recover and, and find something later. Uh, I'm gonna hop over to Google Tag Manager. And so you can see that we have that single account, Drupal NYC. 
And then we have two containers, one for our camp website and one for uh, our main nonprofit website. And so we're here in the, the camp website. Uh, and if you're not familiar with the Google Tag Manager uh, interface, uh, we're here in the workspace. This is where we configure uh, you know, Google Tag Manager. Um, and here's the tag that we added. That was the Google, uh, the Universal Analytics uh, configuration. And the variables is where I want to dive in a little more here. So we talked about the built-in variables and here are the user-defined variables. Um, remember we had these constants down here for uh, the tracking IDs from Google Analytics. Um, so for dev and local, uh, you can see it's you know that UA value. And we've got a different one for each environment. And that lookup table that I mentioned, basically the way that works is you say the variable type is lookup table. The input variable is environment name. And that was one of the built-in variables that we checked uh, earlier. And then the lookup table, you say, well, if the environment name is dev, then use this variable to fetch the Google Analytics ID that we're going to use. And so this is the magic where we map our uh, Google Tag Manager environment to our Google Analytics property. And so you can see here for the dev environment and the other environment in Google Tag Manager, we're actually using the same Google Analytics uh, property. Uh, and that's why that property is named dev and also local. Um, if we go to Drupal Entity Bundle, it's just a representative example. Uh, so we've created a data layer variable. That means fetch the, the value for this variable from the data layer. And importantly, uh, we have to give the variable name from the data layer. So Entity Bundle here, exactly as written, is what we had configured in uh, the data layer module uh, for Drupal. And so that's how we, we map the bundle uh, of, a, of an entity or a node um, yeah, from an entity from Drupal to Google Tag Manager. Uh, and then it also shows that we have a reference to this variable in GA settings. So let's go into the GA settings variable. And you can see the GA settings variable requires that we provide the, the Google Analytics tracking ID. And so that's our lookup table variable that we just walked through. Uh, you can set some uh, special fields here. Um, so I set the user ID field, which is used by the user ID views. And we pass in the Drupal user UID. Uh, and that's the version where we've stripped out uh, the value zero if it's present um, so that it, it is clear that actually there is no Drupal user there. Uh, and then the custom dimensions here. Um, so each index maps in, in the same in Google Analytics and you're, you're mapping those custom dimension indexes from Google Analytics uh, to those uh, Google Tag Manager variables that we defined. So here's that reference to Drupal Entity Bundle that we, we just saw. And there's some other options down here. Uh, we use uh, Tito for uh, you know, ticket sales. Uh, and so we've got uh, domain linking set up there so that um, hits uh, from our website to Tito um, and hits on the Tito uh, website uh, all get wrapped up uh, into our Google Analytics uh, property. Okay. Let's see, anything else interesting to show you here? Do we have any other questions, Amy June? Uh, you're good so far. Okay, so just another example of a custom variable. Um, so here's one Drupal user roles, comma separated. Uh, and this is how we get the Drupal user roles from Drupal and we pass it to Google Analytics in a easy to read form. Uh, and so on the, the data layer, uh, the Drupal user roles, uh, the Drupal user roles Google Tag Manager variable is a data layer variable. And so this is the value that it picks up there. And uh, it's actually an array on the data layer. 
And so we need to get that into a text form for Google Analytics to consume because you can't pass an array to Google Analytics, doesn't know how to deal with that. And so all we're doing is, is separating each value with a comma. Uh, and so it's a tiny little bit of custom JavaScript that runs on the Google Tag Manager platform to convert the array of, of roles to a comma separated list. Okay. I probably run out of things to show you in Google Tag Manager itself. Um, I wonder if there's anything else on the website that might make sense. So we can we can walk through some more of the data layer uh, module configuration options here. Let's see. Yeah, so these are some of the, the options you have where you can, uh, you can say that I actually don't want to expose um, user information uh, for every role. Um, so you could have a role that is, you know, opted into sharing or something like that, and only uh, users of that role actually have this information shared up to Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. Um, bit of a contrived use case, but um, that's, that's something you could do here. Um, so I should, I guess I should mention that, uh, you know, you're not restricted to what's available in the UI here. The data layer module uh, uh, includes the, the Google data layer uh, helper library. Uh, so there's a, a JavaScript library that you can use to uh, do some neat things. I haven't played around with it too much, um, but it, it's very extensible. Uh, and so you can have any kind of custom logic you want to put something on the data layer and then configure Google Tag Manager uh, to take uh, you know, that data and do something with it, pass it to Google Analytics or a, a, another third party service, for example. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here. And I see Benji had a question here. <laughs> it's a good one. What sort of business decisions does Drupal Camp NYC make based on its Google Analytics data? Yes, this is a, uh, a pointed and appropriate question. Um, so none, <laughs> not, really, not yet. Um, and uh, my implementation on the Drupal Camp website uh, was really more of a, uh, a learning exercise for me um, and we're not we're not set up to have our Google Analytics really set up properly, um, you know, to to make some useful business decisions. Um, the you know the key data for us at the moment is financial, and we we get that data elsewhere. Um, it would be interesting, I think, um, to hook up uh, the enhanced e-commerce integration uh, so that when a, a an attendee purchases a ticket, for example, or makes a donation because uh, it's free tickets. Um, uh, you know, that gets tracked and we can have some reporting in Google Analytics. But the reality is for a once a year event like ours uh, with a, a bunch of volunteers running it, we're not using Google Analytics for business decisions, right? Um, and so this is more an example for larger businesses and organizations that actually would be taking advantage of it. Um, yeah, thanks for the question, Benji. Thanks, everyone. If you have any more questions, um, you can find me on uh, BadCamp. Slack or Drupal Slack or Drupal NYC Slack. <laughs> Hope to hear from you.